Hello and welcome to this month's astrological forecast of what's going to be happening in the heavens and what gifts from Mother Nature we can grab so that we can navigate through the different shifting energies. This is my second time recording this, it must have been because Mercury is going retrograde in a few days, but hey, now we get a beautiful rainbow, so that's a beautiful thing. Anyway, let's dive in and our first astrological let's start that again. Our first astrological event happening this month is going to be on the fourth, and that is our new moon. Now this new moon is in Leo. Leo is a sign of pleasure, leisure, and fun, just relaxing a bit more, allowing our creativity to flow. You know, as adults we can get really, really serious about our lives and end up missing out on so many great things and doing so many things things because we're too busy working and adulting. The new moon is a time to stop, reflect and work out, is there enough fun in my life? Am I going out and doing things that I enjoy? Am I actually pausing to rest and recover and kind of entertaining that inner child within me? Now some beautiful gifts that you can bring at this time, a beautiful new moon oil, green mandarin. It comes from an unripe fruit, a fruit that is yet to come to its full fruition. And that's exactly what the new moon is about. This is about a time when we start to think about, okay, how do I want to grow and expand and bring more fun into my life? And of course, citrus oils are always quite fun and joyous. So it's a really great one to use during the new moon in Leo. Along with that, you know that I love working with dark and black crystals on the new moon because they have a real meditative and reflective energy, and that's exactly what the new moon's about. The one I choose for the new moon in Leo is black opal. Now, this has got little sparkles in it. I don't know if it's going to show on camera, possibly not, but hopefully you know what a black opal is. And this is a beautiful one for bringing, again, opals have a childlike, playful energy about them as well. So I'd love you to get a black opal and work with green mandarin and really start thinking about, okay, is the childlike playful part of me having enough fun? Is it getting enough attention? That's what we want to do on the 4th. Now, the following day on the 5th, that is when Mercury goes into retrograde. Don't freak out. You see, Mercury is the planet of communication and thought. So when Mercury goes in retrograde for a couple of weeks or about three weeks, what you're going to find is that there's going to be communication breakdowns. Now, Mercury is in Leo and then is in Virgo. And so you might find that you kind of dominate conversations or you might see where you're not a very good listener because of that Leo energy. And you may become a bit pedantic. People at work may start to annoy you and there could be kind of conversations around there. So watch your mouth around work. Don't say things that you're going to regret later and learn to listen a bit more. What I've recommended for this Mercury Retrograde is a very calming duo. It is Blue Lace Agate and Roman Chamomile. These two gifts of nature have such a gentle and soft energy. In fact, the key word that I always use whenever I'm talking about either of these is gentleness. They allow us to be gentle with ourselves. And if we do stuff up during Mercury Retrograde, to not beat ourselves up with that harsh inner critic and just learn from the mistakes. That's exactly what Mercury wants us to do while it's absent. It wants us to see how we go without its assistance, go, oh, how can I become a better communicator and thus improve? So don't beat yourself up, be gentle on yourself, be gentle with other people, shut up and listen occasionally, and just kind of allow that throat chakra to kind of soften in the way that you speak your words. You want to make sure that you don't get too harsh, too loud, too dominating during this Mercury retrograde. You see, the beautiful lesson we have in a Mercury retrograde is to learn how to become the best communicators we can possibly be. And the mistakes and the flaws that come up during the retrograde are the lessons from where we can learn. We know that being a good communicator allows us to form harmonious and peaceful relationships. A poor communicator causes rifts, war, and challenges in our lives. So work with the lessons of this time and keep your blue lace agate and your Roman chamomile really, really close. The next special thing we have is happening on the 7th of August. The start of August is jam-packed full of different things. So this will depend where you are in the world, uh, which hemisphere you're in, on what you're going to be celebrating. So first of all, if you're down here with me in the Southern Hemisphere, it is a celebration. It's a solar celebration halfway between the winter solstice and the spring equinox called Imolk. Now, Imolk uh, sometimes is translated to mean sheep's milk or lamb's milk. It's when you'll get the first signs of spring. Now, it's still going to be freezing cold, 
but you'll start to see a little few flowers, wildflowers coming out, maybe some baby animals are starting to emerge from their nests and their burrows. And what we're doing is we're coming out of that winter slumber slowly, and we're just starting to think about what would I like to do in the warmer months? What are my goals and ambitions as we get into the spring and the summer and then the harvest time of the autumn? So this is a really great time to work with the third eye chakra to take control of your life, not necessarily spring into action yet, because it's not spring quite yet, but start thinking about that. How do you take control of making your life better? Well, this is where we want to work with lapis lazuli. It's an amazing crystal for the third eye chakra. And whether you wear it, whether you carry it, whether you meditate it with you on, on your third eye each night, start to think about this around the celebration of Imok. Pair that with beautiful sandalwood. I love sandalwood. When you inhale sandalwood, it's got this really earthy, grounding aroma. But we also know sandalwood to be an amazing spiritual oil as well. So sandalwood almost links our divine inspiration that we get through winter and working with the crown chakra with the earthly matters. And that's exactly what the third eye chakra does. It engages our intuition and our, intu and our intellect to work out how do I bring in these grand ideas and make them practically and physically work in this mundane world? So working with sandalwood, I love using sandalwood in a drop in my skincare and then really focusing on that third eye chakra. If you're a guy, sandalwood worn as a natural fragrance is far better than colognes that upset our hormones. Plus, it's said to make us more attractive as well. It has a similar kind of effect to pheromones. So get your sandalwood on you around this time and if you're in the Southern Hemisphere and your lapis lazuli. Now there's a reason why I chose lapis lazuli and I'm gonna to get to that in a minute. But first, what about the northerners? If you're in the Northern Hemisphere, it is the celebration of Lunasad, named after the European god Lu. Now, the, Lu was a very an archetype of a king. He was a muse, he was very musical, um, and he was very celebratory. And as you're getting to this autumn kind of harvest, you can maybe start to see the weather starting to cool a little bit. I know a lot of school, summer holidays are over, school's going back, and even some of the leaves might be changing colour. This is halfway between the summer solstice and the spring equinox, and it's a time to celebrate and be grateful, to kind of look at all the things that you have achieved in the last year and really honour them. You know, in life, because we're always so uh, focused on achieving the next thing, we tend to go from achievement, right, what's next, what's next, what's next, what's next? We don't stop and pause. And Lunasad is a great celebration to do that. It's a great time. Again, we talked a little bit about getting creative and even, you know, kind of getting into the arts that's very leo from new moon in leo as well but kind of getting into your own creativity but also celebrating other people's creativity write a song write a poem make a painting if that's what you do but also get out and support other artists local artists and that type of thing as well this is really sacral chakra kind of work around this time it's about forming intimate relationships and getting creative ourselves and celebrating other creation as well the two Gifts of nature that I've chosen to work with for your lunasad are the beautiful carnelian. I love this piece, it looks like it's got veins in it. Um, and cinnamon bark. This, of course, is a crystal of fertility. It helps to bring new life and bring creation and really celebrate everything that lunasad is all about. And cinnamon bark is an aphrodisiac, so it does help with really strengthening those relationships and people we've met as being more social in the warmer months, but also putting up some boundaries because autumn is also about letting go of things that don't serve us. So these two work really well together. Now, the other reason I chose Lapis Lazuli and Carnelian, are these are two crystals that are actually sacred to Isis. And the asteroid Isis actually finishes her retrograde motion. So she goes direct on the same date, on the 7th of um, August. Now. When Isis, what Isis uh, kind of governs as an asteroid is how you manifest and how you create your own magic and bring magic into your life. And you may have been reviewing that and feeling like you, you've kind of lost your mojo a little bit over the last few months. But now that she goes direct, it's going to come back together. With Lapis Azuli that gives us the ideas of how to actually manifest what we want in our lives and Carnelian, which actually allows us to do that, then guess what? It's going to be a really great duo to work with wherever we may be in the world with Isis going direct. So my rainbow's gone but that's all right the sun's come out and you can obviously see my camera here but that's all right let's keep going along. You've got a bit of a break now and then it's not until the 20 uh, sorry the 19th of August that we actually have our full moon. Now this full moon is in the opposite sign of Leo. What's that? It's Aquarius that's right and Aquarius is the 
sign of revolution of i i like to call the full moon in aquarius actually the um the light bringers or the light workers full moon Aquarius is about coming up with new ideas to make the world a better place. It's very community focused, it's very humanitarian. And so this is where you kind of contemplate, how can I use my unique skills, abilities and magic to make this world a better place? And how can I now communicate this to the full moon and to the universe so that we work together and commune and bring that magic into manifestation? White and clear crystals are really great to work with around the full moon and is my little Herkimer Diamond crown, but four Herkimer Diamonds all growing together. Herkimer Diamond doesn't have to be as big and as showy offy as this, but Herkimer Diamonds help us to bring manifestation into our lives because they're so clear, they bring us clarity. It's clear quartz, which amplifies our intentions, and Herkimer Diamond brings us clarity. If you don't know what you want, how are you going to manifest it? So working with Herkimer Diamond will be really great. We pair that with Neroli essential oil orange blossom essential oil. As a white flower, it is sacred to the moon, but it also has a very Uranian energy and Uranus actually governs uh, Aquarius. So that's how it all ties in together. Now, what I love about Neroli is it pairs really beautifully with Jasmine. Jasmine helps you to connect with the lunar energy, but Neroli helps you to work out, okay, how am I going to actually give my energy out to the world? What am I gonna do? How am I gonna be the change I want to see in the world? It helps to relax us. It helps us to think innov innovatively. It helps us to get out of our, you know, get out of our comfort zone and really enjoy life and flourish in that way. So work with those two around the 19th of August. Now our final retrograde, stay tuned to my socials later in the month because this is one I haven't talked about much before. It is a major feminine asteroid, it's Hygieia. Hygieia is where we get the word hygiene. This is a major asteroid of health and different things to do with your health may come up around the 28th of August. This is a really great time to grab your chloride in quartz. Now you see chloride in quartz, can I get, catch it in the sun? Possibly not, but it's got these beautiful green inclusions in it. And chloride is one of the best crystals in the entire crystal world for helping to regain our physical well-being. This is the time to focus on how you're feeling and making sure that you are honoring your body temple. Bring it in with Palmarosa. Palmarosa works beautifully with Hygieia. And check out my video with aromatherapist Elizabeth Ashley, where we really go into a deep dive into Palmarosa and Hygieia together. But this amazing essential oil helps us cut away all the pain and hurt that stops us from actually cherishing and loving our body. So that's what you can expect for autumn. The cockatoos are excited above me. Um, so to summarize, on the 4th of August, you've got a new moon in Leo, reflecting and refocusing, re-steering your ships towards more fun and leisure and pleasure in your life. On the 5th, Mercury goes retrograde for three weeks. Calm your farm down with some Roman camel and some blue lace agate. On the 7th, if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, it's time to grab your lapis lazuli and your sandalwood to start thinking about how you're going to bring your new plans into manifestation because it's Imok. Or if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, that's when it is Lunasad. Celebrate, be grateful and get creative and get into the, the fun of creativity, celebrating your creativity and other people's by focusing on the sacral chakra, grabbing your carnelian and some cinnamon bark and working with that as well. Of course, Isis asteroid goes direct on the 7th as well. So you may find that your mojo comes back and that creativity does start to flow. On the 19th of August, it's a full moon in Aquarius. It's time to work out how you're going to be a light worker in this world and bring blessings to the circles around you, specifically, not just your community, but all of humankind. Remember that what we do in this world has ripple effects and impacts people far beyond what we'll ever know. And then finally, on the 28th of August, Hygieia goes retrograde, so you may find some things come up that actually get you to question about your physical health and how you actually honor your body. That's where you need your palm rosa and your chloride and quartz. Of course, remember to stay tuned, especially follow me on Instagram. Make sure you jump onto my website, Adam Barillet, and subscribe to my newsletter, because that's where you'll get in-depth weekly updates and we'll be exploring some of these crystals and essential oils in a little bit more um, depth as well. Well, the rainbow's gone. I'm gonna go. Thanks for hanging out with me for a few minutes. I'm Adam Barillet. Blessed be.